back on Gertie Rude, back again, the Tuesday mood. Well, I'm back again, and today I thought I'd do a bit of politicking, because apparently, you two viewers, now grasp everything, grasp everything, prepare to be astounded and agobbed. Apparently, politicking in Britain at the moment, in fact, dare I say, in most of the Western world, including America, apparently, and your Europe. Do you know your Europe? Yeah, it's just over from the Isle of Wight somewhere that nobody goes, because obviously, well, you have to shout at them when you speak English. Yes, you do. They seem to all be deaf. Something like that, anyway. They're all politicking at the moment. Oh, it's, well, it's the flavour of the month, isn't it? It's the flavour of 24, I think. So, we got a lot of politic going on. Now, this lady on your right is, what's her name? Summit G. Oh, I know who it is. It's Jacob Rees Mosmog's sister. Yes. Don't ask me her first name. I always get her muddled up with Belinda De Lucy, who was in the uh, Brexit party with Nigel Flange over in European Union. And Anne Whittacombe. I like Anne Whittacombe. Yes, she's she's fine lass. Um, and they're talking politics or just politics. I'm not sure, but something's going on. And they are talking about the D4 party. Because this is the party that has obviously been put up by some uh, rich philanthropists. Let's just be polite and say that. Um, to counter what's going on with the Labour Party, because they know that Tories are royally mucked up. It's obvious, isn't it? I mean, you don't have to be Blaine Einstein to work that out. And they're probably going to have a wipeout, is what the legacy media is calling it. Akin to the 97 wipeout of the major government which brought in the Blair government. Do you remember? Yes, I was only a child. All oh, right, I wasn't. Got you lot. Anyway, what's doing that? Something's going on. It's my devices. They're beeping. Um, so they are predicted to have a landslide victory to the Labour and probably shored up by the Greens and the Independents or the other ne'er do wells, whoever, whatever, no one cares. And so they have launched upon us, the Richard Spice, with his lovely wife, the Isabel Okishotti from Talk TV. And then Flange took over and now Richard Tice is the chairman and Flange is the mouthpiece. He's the man, he's the man that can. And he's going to deliver us all, deliver us all from evil or whatever. And um, yeah, it's rather interesting because, of course, come election day, if by some sort of ooky voting count machine, <laughs> the Conservatives do slightly better than expected, uh, reform, if they get enough seats and enough votes, could go in with the Tories to push Labour out. So you'd have a coalition government between the deform and the bleeding old Tories that are there already. So it's all the snouts in the trough, people with their snouts already in the trough, and some new snouts to go in a new trough, is what's going to occur. Or the landslide would pull out, push out all those people, it'll just be a massive Labour victory. Or Labour Green, probably Plaid Cymru or whatever. Whatever it is they do, don't ask me, I don't know, I don't do politics. I think we should have less politics, not more. I am at heart, you know. An anarchist, which doesn't mean what people were led to believe it means. It just means that, well, we don't need as much middle class nobby people telling everybody what to do. We should just keep keep the seven deadly sins or whatever it is. Just keep the laws of the country and have less of them. We need less politic in, not more. So it's a tangled web that they're weaving for our delectation. It's a bit like bleeding pickup sticks. You know, that game It's annoying, isn't it? So we're going to jump in and see what Julia Hartley Brewer, Brewery, Julia Hartley lives above the brewery. She does, I know it. I can tell. You just tell. Look at her, she's half drunk every time you see her. Come on, Julia. I love you, darling. Um, they've had some bad news for them. Just two oh. weeks before the general election, a reform right. candidate for West Ham and Beckton, Georgie uh. David, has said that she is defecting to the Conservatives because she says right. she's been frustrated and dismayed by Nigel Farage's failure to tackle uh. concerns about other reform candidates. Uh. And she says the vast majority, her words, of her fellow candidates for reform are racist, misogynistic no. and bigoted, although she says she doesn't believe the scene. I totally believe that because I've had a tangle the whole load of them they're a bleeding a lot annoying lot they hate everybody that isn't them and this young lady on the right you can see now her name is in fact Annunziata Annunziata Rismog what a beautiful name yes yeah, she's a lovely woman isn't she bless her she's one of these ladies that likes to have lots of children and I love ladies like that I think it's wonderful bless her unlike me she's not fat for it though look at her, her cow bag anyway <laughs> so there's that and 
I've had a bit of a tangle myself with the default party. I would have voted for them just because, do you get me? Actually, I couldn't because we haven't got one in my area. So I think there's an independent or a bring a bottle party, cheese and wine party, something like that. Anything to do with cheese and wine and and bring a bottle. Anything to do with food and drink, I'll vote for. Yeah, because they haven't got hope in hell of getting in. And it's a way of using my vote tactically to not actually be part of whatever shit show is going to ensue. Either way, if the mop flops Labour, it's going to be a... Well, it's going to be a shit show, isn't it? And if it flops Coalition, that's going to be an even bigger shit show. So, myself, I use my vote because if you are issued with a voting card and don't use it on the day, your fa failure to turn up vote will go to the, whoever is winning anyway. Do you get me? It does it. It Just check it out. That's, that's what happens. That's why we should all use our vote. And we should use it manfully and womanfully. To be fair, I don't really care. They're all idiots, aren't they? You say all they promise you the world, don't they? They're like bad bleeding boyfriends or husbands, aren't they? They promise everything's gonna be changed, it's gonna be all different. They get their feet back under the table and it's back to the bleeding drawing board with them, isn't it? It's the same old, same old. So I don't trust any of them, they're all wrongins. Um, but reform is not the new messiah. They are not who they claim to be. And the people that actually, I'm not saying all of them, because I'm sure there's some worthy reform people, because I was going to vote for them, and I'm worthy. Well, me believeth, me thinketh. Um, so there's probably a lot of just genuine people that think, you know, I'm going to give reform a chance because they're different. I've lived under all the others, and they're just, well, they're just, I don't want to say anything. So I say YouTube, when you're on YouTube, you have to talk as if the vicar had come to tea. So, <laughs> reform. They are what they are. Racist, misogynist, mis misogynist, bigoted. I found all three of them in the last month. I've had actual one-to-one -one dealings with Reform. They're not pleasant people. Um, some of their followers are really racist, misogynistic and bigoted. Yes, they are. And all the other is isms and isms as well. And if you can tick a few of their boxes, well, you might as well just go away and hide under a table somewhere. Never to be seen again in social circles or in daylight. So anyway, there's that. That's my own. I don't know what you people, I mean, you know, vote for who you want. I've just given up the will to live. I don't care. The way I look at it, a lot of their followers, they they are going and harking back to some sort of halcyon um, Eden that Britain was, that actually it wasn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> and even if it was, Pale Mail Stale hasn't really built it to be any more than what it is. So it's a bit, you know, late. And all us lot, we're not going to be here in the future. So we're building it for the future. And the future world is going to be crafted in a way that maybe none of us living now can envisage. We ain't George Bleed Norwell. So we can't really interpret what could or may happen in the future. We can talk about AI taking over the world and nobody having to work anymore and all this old crud. You can talk about that all day. But basically the way that, that the, the countries are going nowadays, it's a whole lot of uh, different from, say, in my day, which was back in the 40s, I mean 20s, or was it 30s, can't remember. I was only there sort of sentiently, slightly, every every couple of years. So, at this stage, to be coming out and saying, oh, Britain to be British, British for white and all this old crap, and women should know their place and be at home cooking the dinner and all that, old, you know what they're like, these people. And, I mean, I am actually seeing the rights of women eroded alarmingly, across all political spectrums and for any number of reasons and reform if they were actually turning out to be uh oh we're going to be different from all the other parties and we're encompassing everybody they wouldn't be so misogynistic to women which i have actually will stand here every day if i have to and remind everybody that i was treated very misogynistically by the reform party recently and they're not good people and their followers by and large probably are but they've got a really bad underbelly and they do um they do attract some proper bleeding fruitcakes anyway <laughs> should we just move on a bit in your leadership right. are racist at yes. the party um you work closely with people oh like yeah because i've been called racist by them i've been called racist i mean i was uh somebody just slightly right of uh that horrible little german fella you know the german fella with the tash charlie chaplin he used to hang about in germany in the 30s well, one day I was one of his supporters and then the next day the same people were saying I was on, I think it's verbatim, I was on the beach in Dover patting migrants on the head as they got off their boats. I mean, make of that what you will. <laughs> Can you even see that? 
Yes, so yeah, Confuciatius is their sort of default position with a lot of their followers. They're pretty rabid. And a lot of them haven't really had any stake in society worthy of just being blowhards, really, <laughs> and getting out there and being bigoted, you know. That's where they can wobble, you know. <laughs> you know, the pale male stale sort of gammon people. I mean, you know, I love them. Working class people are cool. I love all sorts of people. I love the middle classes. I love the knobs. I don't care people are people. But the Reform Party are sort of... Well, they're like Pied Piper, aren't they, to these uh, ignoramuses. Let's be polite and just call them that. I think ignoramuses is a good word. Nigel Farage, Richard Nigel Tice, Garage, Ben Habib and Mr. others Spice. in the party. What I like do you Mr. Make Spice. This claim uh, from Georgie David? I don't know. I, don't know I what genuinely said. don't actually think the leadership are. I think they do. Have no, I don't them. think the re leadership are. I don't for a minute think that uh, Spices or Farages, I mean, they're career politicians or career people, aren't they? I mean, Farage is always a bit flirty and sort of coquettish. Oh, I didn't really want to be a politician. Oh, no, no. He's back by popular demand. But he's a career sort of whatever. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, and the problems that he reckons he can solve uh, ain't going to happen, and less so in a coalition. I mean, it might happen if it was a landslide and reform took every seat and blah de blah and then they were pushed into Parliament. As a populist government, they probably could maybe instigate some change. I mean, a lot of it would be passing laws and getting rid of civil servants that would refuse to do what the incumbent government or the sitting government requires them to do. That would be a really good move. But of course, they've got all the diversity BS, haven't they? And they've got all these... Um, you know, workers' rights and the pensions and these codicils to this law and that. What do they call them? Uh, human resources, don't they? So you can never get rid of these people. A lot of the time when they do massively F-U-C-K up in their positions, they just get moved to another one. Whereas if any of us F-U-C-K'd up massively in our jobs, we get what's called the bleeding sack. So there we are. That's my opinion. Uh, a problem with the type of people they attract as candidates. Right. Um, and not only that, but their rhetoric has emboldened people yes. to be more open yes. about Yes, exactly, Annunziata. Recius Mogus. Exactly. She's nailed it. She's hit it on the head. I don't know what she said, but whatever it was, she's bang on the money. Because uh, it does sort of attract people of what I'm going to politely say, not all of them. I'm sure a lot of them are just very normal people. But they've got a real nub of people that are pretty sub under par intellectually. Let's just say that. Let's be polite, girl. Let's not be rude <laughs> to the pale male stale gammons. <laughs> oh, any more than what you could be. Right, so there's that. And they really don't care about the women's vote. They really don't care. Uh, and... If I was in her district, I would definitely vote for the Women's Party, which is being led by, is it Posey Parker? Posey Parker. K Kelly J. Keen. Kelly J. Keen, yeah. She's a, a brilliant women's activist and uh, she's doing what uh, needs doing, really. And we should be, us ladies, if you are ladies listening to this, we should be supporting Posey Parker. But of course, she's not running near me, so I can't. Uh, very unattractive biases, whether that's on oh, they have. Um, horrible. race or, or horrible. gender. Um, the, gender, race. Uh, people being far more open. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, just... open and thinking it's all right to victimise women and it's actually funny to do it. Uh, all the people that I've just recently been uh, victimised for the last three months by, and we're talking 24-7, we're not just like a couple of instances, we're talking 24-7. Um, they are really, really don't like women and to be fair i've looked into their backgrounds it seems like women don't like them either so the feeling's mutual <laughs> but they haven't got a filter and they haven't got a boundary over which they shouldn't go from the very fact that they are in fact what one used to call males okay and the, their victims are what one used to call factually what one used to call and refer to as females you see in my day and men didn't hunt down and bully women to the extent that Seems okay. It's just okay. Especially with social media, it's a lot easier to do it in it. Keyboard. Just create a load of accounts and go out there and call women horrible names day and night, you know, 24-7. Yeah, because I got I was gonna swear, but I'm gonna say flip all else to do. So I think I said enough. I've probably yeah said far too much. So wherever you are in the world, have a lovely evening, afternoon, morning, good night. Don't let the bed bugs bite, don't let the buggers get you down. And remember, you are the coolest version of yourself. Love you and leave you. Bye bye.